Okay, so what about some other ways to get representations of functions? Without using algebra, we can use we can use calculus. So if this function is supposed to be represented by this power series, what we could do is take the derivative of it. We could take derivatives of polynomials all day long. So if we know a function's representation, then we know its derivative's representation. So if the power series of f is, is a function, it has a radius of convergence, then you can get a power series for its derivative. Take the derivative of the right-hand side. Derivative of the left-hand side, derivative of the right-hand side. So term by term, take the derivative. So here's my uh, left-hand side, f of x comes, to, comes to f prime of x. And then here's my, my right-hand side. The, the c sub 0 is going to go away. That's a constant. The c sub 1 is going to get a... Um, c sub 1 x is going to be... c sub 1 is its derivative. This thing, we just bring down the 2, take it to the 1. Bring down the 3, take it to the 2, and so on. So if you know a power series for a function, then you can take its derivative. Term by term. You can look on the inside and take the derivative. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. So you can bring the derivative inside. These constants, they don't depend on x. And so you just end up taking the derivative of these x minus a to the n terms, which is n times x minus a to the n minus 1. Something strange happens about where it starts at, though. Uh, the original thing started at zero. The original function power series representation started at zero. Well, well now what's going to happen is that it's going to start at one. Well, why the why the change? Well, if n was zero, what would be the first term? When n was zero, plug a zero in for n. What do you get out? So why start with some dumb zero term? That's the point. You don't want to start with a zero term. You want to start with a non-zero term. So. You make it start at 1 instead of starting at 0. Okay. So that's what we're going to end up doing. And it's going to carry forward whatever the radius of convergence, whatever the interval of convergence was for the function. By you taking the derivative, you're not changing that. So the same radius of convergence, same interval of convergence, will carry forward for the derivative. Nothing special about taking the derivative that you can't do without taking the integral, so, so we can do the integral. If we know a function, we can take its integral, and we can take integrals of polynomials all day long. Well, if you take the derivative term-wise, you can take the integral term-wise. Something strange happens here, though, with the integral. The integral gets a plus a c, right? This is an indefinite integral. But yeah, term by term, you just bump the exponent up by 1, divide by the same thing. Bump the exponent up by 1, divide by the same thing. Bump the exponent up by 1, divide by the same thing. You just keep going with that. So if you know a function's power series representation, and you can integrate it, term by term, take the integral. The integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals, and you can on the inside have a representation of the, the power series for the integral of that function. So we can use calculus to get other series. It doesn't have to be algebra. It doesn't have to be that what we were doing before. It could be more sophisticated than that. It could be calculus to get more functions and the power series for those functions. So we can take a derivative and we can take an integral. So let's go back to the one where, where we seem to be, everything seems to be spawning from, the geometric series. Let's go back to 1 over 1 minus x and term by term, take the derivative. And don't forget this plus a c here. Sorry about that. That's the, uh, we're going to have to somehow reconcile what happens with that plus a c. Okay. And you keep the same radius of convergence, same interval of convergence. It gets carried forward, nothing changes by you integrating. Okay. So we know f of x to be 1 over 1 minus x, and we know it's power series. So let's go back to math 103. Let's take the derivative of this. And then we'll take the derivative of its power series. The easiest way to take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is not to do the quotient rule. But you can do that if you want. When there's a constant up top, take the whole thing and bring it up top with a negative exponent. So make this 
equal to 1 minus x to the negative 1. And then do the power and chain together. The derivative of this function is negative 1 times the quantity to the negative 2. Be careful. You're not done there. Chain rule says no, no, stop. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1. So this negative 1 and this negative 1 cancel. And so we end up with the 1 minus x to the negative 2. Or, back to positive exponents, take that quantity and square it. 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. So we can do that. That's top one. We can do that. That's one three. We can take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Okay. We know the power series for it. We can take the derivative of that. So what was the power series for it? Well, the function had a power series that was basically x to the n. Start at 0. So it was 1 and x and x squared and x cubed and so on, on forever. So we take the derivative and we did it. Um, 1 over 1 minus x became 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. This is now my f prime of x. What about on this side? You bring the n down, you take x to the n minus 1. We don't start at 0. Start at 1. That's if you want a nice summation form for it. Otherwise, you can just go to these individual terms and do the derivative on each one of these. 0, 1, 2x, 3x squared, 4x cubed, and so on. And this is just recognizing what the pattern is and writing it in a nice summation form. And we don't care to start at 0, so we start at 1. So now, this is a function that we know the power series representation for. This original function only converges between minus 1 and 1. 1 out, this function's power series will only converge between minus 1 and 1. Good job. Okay. Next step, go back to that guy again, geometric series, integrate it, get a new function. Questions about this before we move on to that? But now this is on our list. We're making a list. We're, in the end, there's going to be about seven or eight series that are going to be on this list. I mean, those algebraic manipulations, those could be on the list if you want. But really, this is a fundamental change here. This is a take of derivative. So this is number two on our list. Uh, the guy up here is number one on our list. This is, this is where everything's coming from. This guy is number two on our list. Yeah? Why are we doing this? Why do we care? Yeah. What's the point? Why do we need a power series for a function? What's the big deal? Why are we spending time on this? Do we have any? Why do we care? I, eventually, right now I can't see it. Eventually, I'll get a function that I get stuck with. I can't do something with um, the function that I like to use in that case is uh, e to the x squared. I don't know what to do with that. 
don't know what to do with e to the x squared when it comes time to integrate it. I, I don't know what to do. I can't find I need something to help me out. I need an x down here so I can do my substitution, and I just don't have it. But still, I might be interested in knowing the area under this curve. Might want to know that for whatever reason. <coughs> a calculator can answer this question. <coughs> what the calculator uses is it substitutes in. Like, like, they're like a, we, we, we like integrating polynomials. It's easy, right? Add one to the exponent, divide by the same thing. So we're going to replace the function with its power series. Okay? There'll be a power series for this. And it looks like, uh, let, me just, let me just give it to you. Uh, 1 plus x squared plus x fourth over 2 factorial, x sixth over 3 factorial, and so on forever. I love integrate that. I have no idea what to integrate with this, but I can do this. And if I'm interested in knowing the integral, this is what your calculator does. We can't do it as humans. We can't do this integration. We can approximate it, though, by throwing in this power series. It can't go out forever. The calculator can't go out forever. Uh, it can go out as many terms as you want. It's going to stop after a while, though. So there's a need to have a power series representation of a function. Now, this isn't the best example, but it's an example. So now... I can know some things about this that I didn't know before. There's power here. There's, there's um, intuition here that's great. And, and that's just, just one case of why you care. Okay, there's more. There's applications. If you just look in our textbook and go to the uh, exercise set, you'll see applications of this. Right? right now, I'm just doing it for math's sake. You know, I'm just asking this. I'm answering this question. The, the, the first thing that comes to mind is this, this, this example here whenever someone asks me is that. And, um, but there's plenty of other applications where I get stuck. I can't do something, but I can go to a computer and replace my function with this polynomial that goes on forever and allows me to do some stuff with it. Okay? We can't integrate everything. We can take the derivative all day long of that, but when it comes time to integrate it, we don't know. What if I wanted to know what the, what the tenth derivative of this was? There's a way to know it in a fast manner. For some reason, I don't want to take 10 derivatives of e to the x squared. So we're going to learn that using power series, we can get it quickly. And we can do whatever we want to with it. So there's, there's things we care about that power series help us for. And we just can't see it right now. So we are building up our library of functions that we know the power series for. We, we now have basically two of them. <coughs> and by the time we're done with this class, we're going to have about seven of them. Today we walk away with four of them. So we start with the geometric. We take a derivative. Now we have this function. And we can do algebra with this guy now. I can algebra, I can algebraic manipulate this. Instead of one over one minus x quantity squared, I can have two over three minus x quantity <laughs> squared. I can do that. But just like we can take the derivative term by term, we can take the integral term by term. So let's go back to the geometric, take its integral, and see where we get with that. How do you integrate 1 over 1 minus x? Okay, let u be what? 1 minus x. I like it. Let u be 1 minus x. What does that do for you? du becomes... Negative 1 times dx. So this guy is becoming a u. dx is going to be the opposite of du. So this guy is going to be negative du.
What function has one over u as its derivative? Cool. Ln of u. With this negative one out there. Great. Negative one times the ln of one minus x. Great. We integrate it. Good job. Math 103. Good job. So take the power series for this guy and integrate that. And now you're going to have a power series for this guy. That negative is going to be a trouble, a little bit of trouble. We'll deal with it, though. We'll deal with it. But don't forget, <coughs> plus C now. We don't have a plus C when we're taking the derivative. But now, if we're integrating, we have a plus C. These are indefinite integrals. There's no limits of integration. We have a plus C. Great. Math 3, good job. Now, the other side, math 4. Integrate the polynomial, the, the power series. Integrate that. So we can start with this guy. Integrate the left-hand side. Now integrate the right-hand side. One's integral is x. Um, x is integral is x squared over 2. x squared is integral is x cubed over 3. We're finding antiderivatives. And so we have it. The question is, well, what about this plus c? I don't want to carry that plus c around. Is there a way to know what c should be? This is a true statement here. True for all x's that are between what and what? True for all x's that are between minus 1 and 1. Everything in between. True for all of those x's. So in particular, it will be true when x is 0. So when you plug a 0 into the left hand side, and then a 0 into the right hand side, what happens is the right hand side all zeroes out. What happens on the left hand side when you plug a 0 in? You get negative the natural log of 1. But what's the natural log of 1? So you get 0 plus c is equal to 0. What's c? c better be 0. All right, great. So now we know c. So we know the series for this function now. The series for this function is that guy there, as we wanted to write in summation form, we go back to the summation of this guy and we integrate the x to the n and get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. What does it start at? It's okay to start at 0 this time. You won't be in the same situation where you had a 0 term. When you take the derivative, you'll end up with a 0 term, so you start at 1. You start the next value up. But when you take the integral, you don't end up with the constant term, or the plus c is a part of it, so you end up with uh, the ability to start at 0. Converging for the same x's that the other series was converging for, and now this is on our list. Number 3 on our list is this. <coughs> and it's all coming from the geometric series that we learned about the other day. Geometric series derivative, we got that last slide. Geometric series integral, we got that this slide. There's one more we can get. But we got to do some algebra first to it, and then do an integral. Questions about this? Right, so this is number three on our list. I mean, this guy is number one on our list. Number two on our list is that guy's derivative, which is on the other slide. 